Welcome back. You're tuned into Bazaar Morning Call here on CNBC TV 18. Well, for starters, uh, the gift nifty suggesting we open up in the green, but we saw what happened yesterday. In today, the bulls get a little bit nervous. And remember, today we have expiry as well. That will play out. That's about the index, but plenty of stocks to discuss. So to help us out with that, Deepan Mehta, Director of LXR Equities, joins us on the show. Hi, Deepan. Good morning. Thanks so much for joining in. Well, Deepan, clearly the nifty bank, you know, has been uh, the index that's been dragging. And if I'm just looking at it in the last one month or so, the Nifty will be down close to around a percent, a percent and a half. The problem is banking names. And SBI is down close to around eight and a half percent odd. Do you view this as a bit of a buying opportunity, buy into these banking names? Or do you think uh, you'd rather wait by? Good morning, Nigel, and thank you for having me on your show. I think the issue with banking stocks is over ownership. And of course, banks uh, have almost 35 percent, around about 35 percent weightage in the Sensex and Nifty. And because of that, a lot of investors who are benchmarked to the in Sensex Nifty also have a large holding in banks per se. And my sense is that a lot of investor portfolios are also overweight when it comes to banks. So although the stock prices have corrected and, and on a fundamental basis, it's a good entry opportunity in most good quality banks. The issue is that the proportion in the portfolio shouldn't go haywire. So I think if an investor is underweight bank, then I think it's a great opportunity which they must grab with both hands and enter into good quality banks. And there's so much of choice when it comes to banks, right from large cap private sector banks to PSU banks, and there are some high growth mid, mid cap uh, banks as well. So I think a decision to buy into the banking sector really depends upon what proportion of banks you're already holding in your portfolio. Uh, this space that has come back in a big way, Dipan, is capital goods, right? I mean, l and is one of the big movers this year. I was looking at the chart of BHEL. In the last six months, BHEL has gained 70% already. And there's some new order wins, uh, you know, for super critical thermal power projects that BHEL has won as well. Uh, do you think it's too late to jump in here or is there more to go? See, uh, uh, Sonia, I think that uh, maybe the price stock price has run up a bit, but there's no denying that the fundamentals that DHL certainly have improved. Uh, as per the AGM, I think, chairman's speech, they're, looking, they're sitting on one lakh crores worth of orders. That's about four times their revenues for FI23, which is quite impressive in terms of earning visibility. Uh, and hopefully, I think we'll see improvement in operating profit margins as well. So from a fundamental perspective, I think next three, four years are going to be great for BHL. And this entire CAPEX cycle, if you go back historically, typically lasts for seven, eight years as well before it starts to fizzle out. So for the entire sector, I think next few years will be excellent. And BHL also, I think, should have uh, should report excellent numbers going ahead or so. But the fact that the stock has run up the way it has, and that's true for a lot of capital goods, I just want to have a wait and watch approach at this point of time and buy at a correction. Uh, when trading is a little bit subdued and stock prices are corrected by 10-15% or so. And that provides just a little bit amount of margin of safety. And actually, that's true for a whole host of uh, stocks. You know, when you look at the entire spectrum of stocks, uh, the one thing which comes to mind is just wait and, uh, you know, see where this particular rally ends because there could be a correction down the corner. And the lot of stocks, I think, are mildly on the, uh, I would say, on the overpriced zone at this point of time. <clears throat> mm. No, but just uh, <clears throat> amazing, right? Uh, Deepan, hi, morning. Uh, Gokul Das is uh, from under 700 now is almost up to 900, uh, two days flat. Uh, any thoughts there? Yeah, good morning, Prashant. This is the same thing. I think we've seen a run up in so many stocks, be it on positive news flow or on account of uh, catching up uh, and removing the underperformance they had for the past several years or could be reporting of good numbers, industry doing well acquisition in the case of Google Das. But when you look at the actual earnings per share and the price to earnings or the price to book ratio, a lot of these companies are trading at rich valuations. And of course, I think uh, earnings will catch up and the next two, three years will be exceptionally good. But at this point of time, I think stocks have run a little bit ahead of what the uh, street earnings estimates are. And from that point of view, I just want to, you know, put a hold on all of these stocks. I wouldn't recommend selling them because, you know, these are great long-term stories and, you know, buying into them in itself, I think, requires a lot of, uh, you know, research and uh, conviction, which is now there in place. So from that perspective, I think if you're holding a stock like Google Das Exports or BHEL or any of the other good quality names which have done well, uh, you can remain invested and maybe enjoy the group upside and be mentally prepared for a correction as well. But from a fresh investing perspective, I think it's better to just wait and watch 
have that compression of p multiple of even three four times or so and that i think will provide some amount of margin of safety all right uh, dipan i want you to view in a couple of these metal stocks you've not been very positive on them but let's discuss a couple of them investec they have come out with the note they highlight that yes jindal stainless is up 240% in the last one year or so but they make this point that it's not a commodity it's a converter rather they have a, they already had a buy rating but now in fact they've gone ahead and increased their target price to 510 rupees from around 410 earlier the key reason out there is increase the multiple from around 5 times ev per bit they made it 6 and a half times what are they factoring in spreads at around 20000 to 23000 uh, rupees per ton they're also fa- uh, factoring in jusl the ebitda out there moving to around 800 crores to around 1200 crores in the next two years or so why are they impressed the simplified group structure the corporate structure there the merger they have also highlighted the capital allocation whether it's a brownfield optionality or even the downstream assets the focus is on better roc and better spread so they like that and the product mix has been improving as well finally they go on to say that by 2025 they're expecting the company to become a net cash company so put all these factors together investec fairly positive on jindal stainless dipan i know your view of uh, on metals you're not been too impressed out there but investec they are pitching this where it's not a commodity it's a converter for you is it the same thing or would you give it a second it's look a, call it which way it's a commodity stock and nothing wrong in it i think you know the way they presented the case i think looks very attractive and at this point of time when we are looking for stocks which have low price to earnings multiple i think jindal stainless and a whole host of steel and other metal companies uh, certainly fit that criteria so yes i think you know uh, you could have a small exposure to metal companies from time to time you get fantastic trading rallies in it but you know if your mindset is to go for long term investing and you have a overview of 3 to 5 years time horizon then i think there are a lot of stocks uh, i mean i know that right now maybe not the best time to buy but there are many businesses interesting companies new listings uh, you know new investment themes opening up which one should try and pursue from an investor's perspective you know there are only so many investment themes and stocks that one can track and if you want to do steel as well as you want to do a company like zomato and pharmaceuticals and software then it you know it does get, does get a bit confusing so from that point of view we try to avoid all commodity stocks and narrow our list and no doubt i think there is some investment opportunity in commodities as well but you need to have a special edge in terms of understanding those industries far better as very well put uh, can't do everything right i mean so uh, stay focused otherwise you lose your head uh dipan uh, shakti pumps uh, i just wanted your thoughts again i'm sort of uh, going outside the syllabus in that sense but no, no. you know 20% yesterday it's uh, uh, it's again not underperform but it's not a, it's uh, the earlier high was made in 2021 before that uh, basically it, you know it topped out in 2018 with the small cap mid cap market then topped out in october 2021 along with the mid cap small cap top Uh, and is back at those levels now yesterday there was uh, news that the haryana government has uh, g- uh, given them an order there is a scheme government scheme called kusum 3 uh, so solar pumps uh, they've received about an order worth about 350 odd crores or so and many are betting that this is the start of many which is, which will come any thoughts yeah you're right i think it's at a very interesting juncture and uh, if my memory serves me right i think that you know on in the seasons when there's a bit of a drought as we are seeing just now Uh, governments uh, the agriculture sector farmers do spend tend to spend a little bit more on irrigation especially localized irrigation which is where i think shakti pumps comes into play uh, their products mm-hmm. have been extremely well received and they are uh, you know all the state governments they have worked with in terms of getting subsidy and in terms of providing pumps so maybe next 2 3 years uh, could be interesting for shakti pumps as well uh, but again as i said you know stocks have run up valuations on the higher side so keep that in mind You know, we're going to have a discussion lined up with an IT company in just a while. And what we noticed is that a lot of these companies, right, mid cap, IT, large cap, they have <clears> risen <throat> about 10, 15, 20 percent from their lows. Uh, Mastic, for example, is at a fresh 52-week high right now, and the stock is up almost 15 percent in August alone. Uh, this is a space you've tracked very closely. You've had a love-hate relationship with the IT space for many years mm-hmm. now. Uh, but which side of the fence are you on now? I'm on the side of mid cap IT. and uh, we want to go for companies which have specialized domain expertise i don't think mastec falls in that category but companies like persistent system tata alexi kpit i think these are the ones which have uh, you know solid uh, presence in certain verticals where they can compete with the larger uh, companies as well and yet provide better talent to the customers and all the mid cap companies if you see the growth rates have been far superior than large cap it 
And that clearly shows that the Fortune 500 companies don't mind working with tier two software companies as well because they provide value to them. And I think this trend will continue for maybe several more years or so because dash cap IT, the base effect also comes into play. So from that point of view, my approach to IT is to be extremely selective. <clears throat> Okay, be extremely selective in the IT space. But you know, some of these companies like Mastec, right? I mean, they've talked about the uh, the deal momentum being very solid at the moment. I mean, and perhaps that's one of the reasons why the stock has outperformed as well. If you own these stocks, do you take profits or do you just let it run? Yeah, I think, Sonia, from a, a valuation perspective, a lot of IT companies are still available at reasonable valuations if you compare to what their expected growth rates could be. And you're right when you say that the deal momentum is good for mid-cap IT company because typically even 30, 40, 50 million dollar type of deals can make a huge difference to mid-cap IT companies like a mass tech considering their actual revenue position at this point of time. But that doesn't work for large cap IT, which is one of the reasons why we want to keep on searching for new ideas within mid-cap IT. And, you know, I don't know, maybe mass tech also uh, may turn out to be an interesting one. I know it's trading at reasonable valuations. Uh, and when looking for good quality, uh, cheap stocks, then certainly mid-cap IT can fit that criteria. But I mean, it's just a process. And as I said, I think you need to be selective. The issue with Mastec has been a high degree of volatility in their earnings as well in the past. And you know, they've been around for a really long time. And I think to an extent, they may have missed a few buses as well if you go back to a 10, 20 year history of Mastec. Got it. In fact, we have the management joining in. So I'll invite you to listen and dip in and then give us your thoughts. As you were telling you,